Welcome to Uncaged, a show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Ulrich Alla. Ulrich, did I get that right? Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Ben. Thank you. <laughs> Elric, it's great to have you on the program. And I'm excited to talk to you about all of the work that you're doing in the technology sphere. Ulrich is the CEO of the Fireware Foundation. You know, I'll let him go into more detail specifically of all the things the Fireware Foundation is working on. But it is the legal body providing shared resources to help achieve the broader fireware mission of promoting, augmenting, protecting, and validating all of the fireware technologies, which as Ulrich, I'm sure will outline to us, is shaping the world that we are moving into and what we're doing today. So before we get there though, before we go into the details about fireware, Ulrich, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Yeah, more than welcome. And uh, thank you for inviting me and having me here. Um, I originally started uh, with a little computer company uh, in Germany, which was then bought by Siemens. So I worked uh, 20 years for Siemens in the IT services department, which was bought again in back in 2011 from a French company called Atos Origin. So they took over some 35,000 people from Siemens and one mm -hmm. of them asked me, and uh, I've been responsible within ATOS uh, for the business with customers from manufacturing industry in Germany for the industry 4.0 consulting. So helping manufacturing companies at that time on their digital transformation. And uh, then I was called one Friday afternoon by the CEO of ATOS who mm -hmm. asked me whether I would be interested in applying for the position I'm having now. Uh, being the CEO of the Fiverr Foundation, as you introduced me. And we created the Fiverr Foundation six years back in September of 2016. I'm excited to go through all of the details for Fiverr. And clearly, I mean, some of the technology businesses that you've been part of are spectacular and quite a progression. But Fiverr is important. Fiverr is a big deal. And so what a great opportunity for you. Tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing Tell me a little bit about the mission and how you're evolving the solutions. Yeah. Uh, so maybe a bit back to the history. Fiverr was created in a public-private partnership of the European Commission. Back started back in 2011. It was called the Future Internet PPP. That is where this FI in Fiverr is coming from. So it's Future Internetware. And uh, after quite a large investment in this PPP, um, the European Commission initiated the creation of the Fiverr Foundation to bring all the results um, into a sustainable ecosystem, an open source ecosystem. And this brings me to what Fiverr is doing. We are providing open source software building blocks, which are used to create Internet of Things platforms like uh, smart city platforms, predictive maintenance solutions for manufacturing companies, water platforms for the digital water management, and so on. This is the first deliverable of the Fiverr Foundation. Second one are standard, standard interfaces. Mm -hmm. Third one, standard data models. And especially the second and third are there to break down these data silos and to make data accessible and available for smart solutions. Right. Smart solutions which are helping to improve when talking, for example, about smart cities, to improve the quality of life of city citizens living in a city on the one hand and to reduce the cost of operating a city. So in the fourth and final deliverable of the Fiverr Foundation are reference architectures. So a kind of blueprint, how to use this open source software technology, the interfaces, the data models to mm -hmm. create platforms and smart solutions on top of these platforms. That sounds so easy, right, Ulrich? It is. <laughs> like playing, 
band like playing with Lego. Are you familiar with Lego? Lego. <laughs> of story. course, everyone is. Yeah? It's an incredible uh, area that you're working in. And certainly there's a ton of developments that are moving very quickly on kind of the next generation of what the internet is going to be. We might often call things a bit like Web 3-ish sometimes in the US context, but this is different. And I'd love to get a sense of maybe some of the projects that you guys have been involved with or some of the groups that have used Fiware. Uh, let's focus here maybe on the on the vertical of smart cities. And, mm. um, uh, I need to mention we as Fiverr, we are a non-for-profit organization working for the public good, mm -hmm. similar as a Linux foundation, as a Wikimedia foundation. We are not doing projects our own. They mm -hmm. are done by either by end users directly, but that's only maximum 10% of the end users of this technology, or by system integrators, by IT companies who are using our technology to build um, platforms and uh, smart solutions. And uh, let me start with uh, one end user who has own sufficient capabilities and know-how. That's uh, the capital of Uruguay, yeah? oh. Montevideo. Montevideo, um, okay. It is an amazing city and country when it comes to digitization in South America. Uh, they learned about Fiverr four years ago at the Smart City Expo World Congress in Barcelona asked their utilities uh, department to build up a complete Fiverr smart city platform. In the meantime, they have 450 intersections on the platform, having sensors measuring the traffic flow, um, having um, digital tickets in the buses, so they always know how many people are in the buses, and are actually working on a solution that full buses, so many people are affected, mm -hmm which are behind their schedule, get green traffic lights to allow this bus to catch up with the original schedule. And uh, wow. this is just one example of more than 300 cities in more than 30 countries using Fiverr technology for their digitization, for building their smart city. And with this, Fiverr is the world leading open source software technology for the digitization of cities and also um, regions and villages because this technology is not only working in large urban areas but also in rural areas. Well, I think we may need a little bit more of that in the US, Ulrike. I don't know if our cities are so smart these days, but yeah. I'd love to hear more about where we are in terms of the rollout of these things. So you said that you have literally quite a few cities that are embracing these technologies. Are you finding that they're very focused on specific applications of this? Or how broadly are you seeing these solutions being rolled out? Yeah, it is, uh, it is always a transformation journey. Mm. Um, our recommendation is always to start with a basic decision for an integration framework for a platform, and then to start with applications where the citizens get very soon first experiences with the, right. um, the solutions, get benefits out of this to be able to take the citizens with on the digital transformation journey. Right. And the um, uh, first solutions um, are, for example, in the area of smart lighting driven by cities because um, simply switching from traditional lights to LED lighting saves already 70% of the energy consumption. And when you're then able to make the street lights even intelligent, mm. that they are able to dim down when not that much light is needed. And for example, when a bicycle comes, the street, the lamp pole identifies the bicycle, dims up, gets brighter, and tells already the next lamp, hi, there's a bicycle coming, so please shine up and uh, give sufficient light to the bicycle. This I love it. I love project, it. Which are yeah, which are which have a business case uh, within three to five years uh, to pay their return simply based on the energy energy um, uh, uh, reduction. You know? Another example is uh, smart parking. Mm -hmm. That uh, I am as a driver not directed to my target destination, but to the closest free parking lot. 
And uh, when I'm then even able to reserve, let's say I'm 15 away, 15 minutes away from my target destination, have an urgent meeting, and I'm able to reserve the ideal parking lot, which just became available next mm -hmm. to my target destination, then I would even be willing to pay one or two more dollars for this parking lot. And this is a simple example how data can also be monetized. And yeah. uh, data is something which will, uh, yeah, which will drive our way of living in the future more and more. All our life will gravitate around data. And this is yeah. simply our mission to make this data available for smart solutions. Well, I love the street lamps. I'm not sure I like having to pay more for parking, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. I saw that the foundation got going at the tail end of 2016, and a lot has happened in the world since 2016. In some ways, whilst we were moving forward with smart cities a bit, perhaps in 2017 to 20, we then had the hiccup of this pandemic. And I'd be curious to hear how the pandemic impacted the work that you and the foundation are doing. It heavily impacted our work because we were pushed. A lot of cities, a lot of end users are identifying that digital solutions are an instrument to better manage the limitations coming out of a pandemic. We can mm. see it in our uh, memberships. We were founded as a non-for-profit organization by four companies back in 2016. And we announced earlier this year, Deloitte as our member number 500. And uh, two months ago, also Amazon Web Services joined us. They used our technology, our open source technology, created a platform based on their cloud service, call it uh, Smart Territory Framework. And uh, also Red Hat joined us last year from the US. And uh, wow. You asked the question, how digital are uh, American cities? And uh, I think there's still a bit of a way to go, although there are yeah. a lot of cities which are on a really good way. And yeah. uh, we have a focus this year on or the, the next 12 months on uh, North America to further increase our footprint also in uh, North America. Yeah, it's the discussion around cities is a fascinating one, really coming out of the pandemic, because I think probably one of the things that has always been important about cities is that it brings people together, ideas together, culture together. But in a world with a pandemic, we were all suddenly cloistered in our homes, wherever they may be, and nobody wanted to even go into cities, right? Mm -hmm. So it's quite an interesting one, I think, as the world kind of wakes up again and really pushes back into figuring out how they want to work in cities. What you and Fiware are doing is absolutely critical because I don't think anyone wants to go back to a dumb city, right? Mm -hmm. People want to work in a city that actually is more efficient and easier to use. And uh, in fact, actually is more hospitable and more human, right? And this is kind of coming from someone who's lived in New York for the last 20 years. It's a very brutal city. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I think we need more of the work that you guys are doing there. As you look forward, Ulrich, into the near future, what are your plans for Fiware? Where are we going to see you guys focus in the next, let's say, six to 18 months? Yeah, um, we are providing a technology, concepts, ideas, solutions, which were born in Europe. Mm. And for us, it is very important to globalize uh, mm. because we are convinced that an approach like Fiverr can only be sustainable when it is accepted and adapted on a global scale. And uh, we are very successful in, in India, in Japan, in the Middle East uh, region, in South America. And uh, as I mentioned before, increasing our footprint in North America is on our target list. And what is our, our, yeah, our vision is finally to become what GSM is for our mobile communication. Because with your mobile phone, you can talk being in New York or being in Tokyo or being in New Delhi. And this is our ambition to become the GSM 
for data management wow. uh, to enable interoperable data spaces, interoperable database solutions for the benefit of the people, for the benefit of the companies using these technologies. And uh, I think we are on a good way. Will you do events or will you be partnering with existing events? Like you mentioned in Barcelona was one of the ones that you were involved in. Are will you be doing kind of a fireware event? Uh, both. We are doing both. So, for example, mm -hmm. next week on uh, uh, September uh, 14th, um, we will have our Fireware Global Summit in Gran Canaria in that case. Oh. So an island, uh, not, not too bad. Uh, a really nice uh, location. Lucky you. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, we are we are also uh, participating together with our ecosystem, with partners from our ecosystem in major events uh, around the world. Yeah. For example, staying with smart cities, uh, the uh, Smart City Expo World Congress in Barcelona uh, uh, in November is a target event for us where we will have quite a large booth with um, at least 20 of our partners on our booth. Um, same at the Smart Country Convention. That's a quite uh, new event in Berlin, in Germany. We've been at the uh, Smart City Expo in Kyoto, in, uh, in Japan, and we'll also visit in December 2022 the uh, Smart City World in Miami. Um, so uh, coming also here to North America. Well, let me know. I'm based in Miami, so let me know when you're here. I'm excited to attend that, and I'm very excited to hear about smart cities, smart countries. It seems like we're we're moving in the right direction. Uh, it's been great speaking to you. We've been speaking with Ulrich Alla today. He's the CEO of Fireware, the Fireware Foundation, and we've been talking about how the future internet wear or fireware has actually been applied to smart cities. Uh, they're working on things like smart agri-food, really applying technologies and the utilization of, I'd say, data in a way where we can make elements, things work more effectively for us to create a better, more humane society. If someone wanted to learn more about what you and the foundation are working on, Ulrich, where is the best place to find you? Um, fiverr.org um, is uh, the way or directly contact me via LinkedIn or other social media. I'm more than happy to uh, establish connections to answer questions and uh, to give support. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Uncaged and we look forward to having you back. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers.